Or it is uh, Monday, October 3rd. It's the Moortown Select Board. We're here at the Hogboom meeting room. We're on uh, Zoom as well, and we've got Orca um, uh, broadcasting as well. Um, so we'll get going ahead. We've got uh, a lot on the agenda and a uh, fairly big crowd for us of four people. Um, so we'll look for general public comment. If there's anyone on uh, line that has general public comments, just raise your hand if you would. All right, seeing none there, and feel free, folks, to um, interrupt. Sometimes I, I try to keep an eye on it, yeah. but sometimes I don't. Yeah, I'll get uh, people here. Uh, this gentleman was here first. Are you for general public comments, sir? Nope. Okay, yes, sir, with the mask on. Uh, and your name, please. My name is Bill Zekas. Bill Zekas. All right, Mr. Zekas. Go ahead, we've got a few minutes. When you say general public comments, I just want to you know, ask you a question about our public Yeah, sure. Okay. Um, so, my name is Bill Zekas. I, I live in Moortown. Um, I visited the town clerk's office last week. Uh, because I wanted to see if the town would be willing to distribute some ARPA funds for the Mayor River Valley Senior Citizens Organization, uh, which actually administers the Mayor River Valley Meals on Wheels program. Uh, and I'm on the board of the Mayor River Valley Senior Citizens program, and I'm also a driver for Meals on Wheels. Uh, and Sasha told me that I should come to the Slightman meeting and bring this subject up, and so that's why I'm here. Um, thanks. Do you have a, a written proposal of what you're looking for? I, I don't have something that I, I could hand him, but I could certainly uh, provide that for you. I could certainly uh, talk to it right now. Yeah, why don't you take a couple of minutes to talk to it, um, and then we can go from there. Sure. Okay. Um, okay. Well, that, you know, I was trying to do some research on that. Uh, I looked and saw that the town did have an ARPA committee, and, and found it in the document relating to that that. The town had something like four hundred ninety-seven thousand dollars to potentially spend, and, and I have no idea if decisions were going to make to spend certain amounts or, or not. Um, but then I went to the Vermont League of Cities and Towns website to try to get a feel for well, what are our funds used for, uh, and they were talking about the fact that legislative bodies have discretion over how to spend their local ARPA funds, uh, and so I thought, well, then maybe I should talk about. Um, how I thought we might qualify for the Member of Senior Citizens and the Other Wheels. Uh, it said that one of the ways that um, funds could be used was for government services, which can include public safety. And, and I can tell you, as a, as a driver for Meals on Wheels, when I deliver meals, uh, I, I know some of those people, that's pretty much the big meal of the day. It's definitely a matter of public safety for a number of them. Uh, and it also said that the funding is tied directly to the impacts of the pandemic. And one clear impact of the pandemic is inflation. We're all seeing it, uh, and certainly my organization is seeing it, uh, especially in our food and packaging costs. And, and as I said, I can, hand you, I can give you something in writing, but uh, just right here, we just finalized our budget for the coming year, which starts for us on October 1st, so we're three days into it. Uh, and in that, we see that our food and packaging costs last year alone rose by 38%, which meant from $39,000 to $54,000. It was a $15,000 increase in, in one year. And of course, we expect them to rise again next year. It was coming, and we just don't know how much. How many, how many folks here in Moortown do you serve on your meals? Right program? now, we serve eight people in Moortown. Now, I'm actually going to come to that a little bit. All right. um, overall, you know, it's hard to say because every day, not everybody gets a meal every single day. But my, that is for probably 40 to 45 people through the whole Man River Valley that we serve. And as I say, you know, some people go off, some people come on, you know, it's a, it's a bit of a moving thing, although it's not, it's not like they go off and on and get. Right. Just, it's not like um, our overall budget costs for the coming year are rising 36% from two years ago. Uh, for us, that's $42,000 in just two years. So our expected shortfall for the coming year versus our revenues that we expect to, we currently expect to raise is $20,500. So we're obviously going to do everything we can from the standpoint of fundraising and 
I think grant we can find we're applying for, uh, but we also figured, you know, we looked to see if we could get some support from the town we serve, which is Moortown, Faston, Waitsfield, and Wall. So we're going to each town to see if they want us out. Uh, but the most important thing that I saw on the, on the Vermont Leading Cities and Towns website is it said that towns are only using ARP ARPA funds for, and I'm quoting them, support for local nonprofits doing excellent work that benefits residents. And I went, bingo. <laughs> and I thought we qualified. And so specifically, because I, I figured, you know, we want to know, well, how does it help more town residents? And so right now we're currently serving eight more town residents. We deliver five days a week, but we actually deliver seven meals a week because we give them two frozens so that they can get through the weekend. And, and I will say we are we're frugal. Our drivers are all on paid volunteers. Nobody gets reimbursed for mileage, um, which this year is invincible. Uh, and we also provide congregate lunches, so people can come on Tuesdays to the Evergreen uh, Center in Waitsfield and get a free lunch. And a lot of people do it not, I think partly they do it for the free lunch, but partly I think they do it for the social benefits of just uh, being with other people. And, and we do that, um, to, it's all, you know, we, we fund all of that. And I'm sure some more town folks come to that, but we don't, you know, I don't have the, the numbers for that. But I just kind of played with the number a little bit, and I just said, you know, if we're talking four dollars cost a meal, and I think that's really low based upon what we're seeing these days, but I figured I'll, I'll just be, I'll take the low side. Four dollars a meal for eight residents for the year, that's eleven thousand six hundred and eighty dollars just in cost. So given that, I, I thought, well, I'm going to come here and, and if, if it would be possible, we would ask if you could give us $10,000. So um, you have a shortfall of $20,000. You go into all towns and you're asking us for ten. dollars How did you come up with that number? Like that. I mean, we, we knew that there's, we saw $497,000. And we knew, that, okay, so presumably there are some funds there. The thing is, ten thousand is just a one-time shot. To the That's <laughs> sorry about this. Let me, uh, Somebody's got to do. Let me get this muted here. <laughs> That's a, it's a really good question. Is how we came up with that? And obviously, we don't know what each town will give us. We also know it's a one-time request, just as we can tell. And that would help us this year, and if we can bank some of that, it will help us for the challenges that we're going to face in the coming years. And things, you know, grants, contributions, the things that we do get, you know, some of that is, you know, it's unpredictable. Uh, especially in times of inflation, some people are, you know, find it harder to be generous. Well, what I've, uh, any My questions? questions. Uh, I'm on the committee, and I believe our committee is meeting on Wednesday uh, to discuss different funding. Uh, and um, this is ARPA funding. Yes. Right? We are meeting on Wednesday, right? I believe it is this Wednesday. I believe it is this Wednesday. So, uh, you know, if you could put. I think we need something a little bit more uh, structured as far as, you know, it's, I reached for a number and, and this is the number. I don't think that's going to cut it, you know. I think we okay. need to know. Uh, it doesn't cut it with me anyways. Sure. You know, <laughs> you, we need, I need to know what, what the money, how much money you need and how you're going to resolve this problem in the long term because this is a one-time deal. You know, if we can, we give you ten thousand dollars next year. That really only solves the problem this year. Right. What are you going to do next year? So, yeah. you got you got a long term problem. You can't you can't expect a short term fix. Yeah. You know, uh, I don't think. Uh, yeah. So, you need, uh, in my opinion, come up with something a little bit more uh, substantial than here's the number. Yeah. Okay. And so your meeting is Wednesday. Yes. We, are you saying, you know, I wasn't sure what I needed to do tonight. Uh, are you saying that you'd like something in writing? Um, that would be helpful. Yeah. Helpful. Sure. Okay. And, and who do I, how do I, who do I give it to? Or, you know? uh, if you, uh, yes, bring it here to the uh, 
to the uh, town office. Okay. Turn it to Sasha, and uh -huh. she can pass it on. Okay. Yep. All right. So the um, that that group will be meeting on Wednesday. They'll make recommendations here to the the uh, the select board. Um, and that's an ongoing process. So if you don't have all your information by by Wednesday, um, but certainly the sooner the better. Um, and you may you know ask around. You know there have been a number of groups. Um, you know. Uh, rescue groups, you know, EMS is around, you know, looking for a little bit of that money mm -hmm. and maybe find out. I mean, they're, most of these groups are coming with calculations that are, you know, by town and percentage of, you know, residents using the services as opposed to your budget where you're spending and, and such like that. So it's a little easier for us to get around the number, that number that you kind of pull down like that. Mm -hmm. um, you know, we probably like something like that. Okay. Yes, you got to this October 12th. Okay, so I'm, I'm a week off, so you have a little bit more time to put something together. Okay? Okay. Would it be helpful to attend the ARPA meeting? Uh, I think we'll. You can. I think it's at 6 30. 6 30? Okay. On the 12th. On the 12th. Okay. Am I right? 6 or 6 30? Okay. okay. All right. Thank you very much. Very good. And um, you can me back. Nicole Malone, and I'm just following up on the last select board meeting where we had the hearing for Frank Piazza in 2013 and the group 100B. Uh, the deadline has come and gone. That was last Monday. The select board said they would hold an emergency meeting so we could file paperwork with the court to. Uh, court order. I'm just checking in. How's that going? Good. We have um, actually on the, uh, the meeting agenda tonight at 7.15, uh, we're going into an executive session to discuss um, what has been <laughs> happening with our lawyer in the last week. Um, so um, there's not much I can tell you just because it's, it's legal stuff, but I can... Yeah, I added to the agenda today. No, it was on the agenda I approved on last Friday. Um, so I can't tell you, again, it's confidential stuff, but um, it is working towards a resolution. So that's what we will file paperwork with the court? We gotta, I gotta, we gotta discuss uh, everything with the, with the board tonight, and we'll make a decision on what we're, we're doing after the executive session. So it'll be a different decision that was made I wasn't here um, to, to, for that discussion. I saw it on uh, on our meeting notes, um, but this is all new uh, stuff that our lawyers bring to us, so it's going to be discussed and decided upon. Mrs. Ron who suggested that we yes, yeah, this this uh, <clears throat> this came about after last meeting. We uh, felt that there was no reason for. Uh, and, um, an emergency meeting. At least Ron Shems didn't think that we needed an emergency meeting. Okay. <clears throat> but the deadline has come and gone, and the next step would be to file a court order. That's correct. Right. <clears throat> All right. Would you have a look next to her? Are you together? <clears throat> All right. Uh, check if there's no other uh, uh, general public comment. All right, so we'll go ahead and move on to the agenda. Um, we have Sherilyn Brown, the treasurer, here with the health insurance. Just right on the end here, Smith. Please. So it's time to renew the health insurance again this year. And uh, Craig has gone over different policies and everything and he highly recommends that we continue staying with what we have currently um in 2021 we were if you guys remember we were able to get money refunded back to us if our claims and stuff were going well so we ended up getting 3300 dollars in 2021 for 2020 claims and as of right now 
the numbers aren't in until the end of September, but we already still have a surplus for 2022 claims of $7,100. Mm -hmm. So the difference in the policy, because um, everything is going up, as everybody knows with COVID, the hospital um, budgets were reviewed and they're much higher than usual for 2023 because of everything that we've been going through. So the increase um, will be $7,600. So he highly recommends that we stay with what we have. We have to sign up for it. We're on a deadline. So if you look at the surplus, we're really not going to be, if that surplus stays the same, we're really not going to be increasing. Where's the $7,500 increase? Um, $7,600 increase. I have these for you too. Sorry, I need to give these to you. Same policy, not any more insurance? Or... No, exact same policy that we have now. So if you look at the column in the 2021 plan, where it's in Done. black, that's what we currently have. If you go over to the middle where it says 2023 plan, that's, that's the uh, same exact plan that we have now, but with the increase. Should get this any smaller, huh? Sorry. I was going to say that. <laughs> well, you want some more light? If I need to find by that. No, I got this one. I probably couldn't make this off of this one. I can't read that. Actually. So, when, is, when, when, is, when do we have to make this decision? Um, I have to have it back to them. These rates that we're getting are only valid until October 27th. So if we don't sign up, there's a good possibility that the rates could go up. And he did look at other um, possibilities and there was nothing that was comparable to what we have. He said that there's no other um, option that is as simple as we have now and we'll have more out of pocket to empty uh, to the employees if we switch. And there's going to be fewer people next year, right? No. I thought it would. That's just right now. There you go. So, so if we if we go with the renewing our policy, mm -hmm. did you say it's an 8.4% increase? Yeah. No, it's actually, it's 11.1%. See the yeah, next I'm saying it's 11.1 here. It's a, yeah, it's 11.1. And 8.4. Now it's down below it. <clears throat> right, but the whole, the difference. Overall. Overall is 11.1. Yeah, overall is 11.1. Right. Right, I think 8.7 is with about 3,300. Right. But the rebate that we get back. Oh, okay, I get you. Right. Presumably the savings could keep it Level. Exactly where we're at right now. Okay. It, it, it all depends on the claims that come in in between now and then. Did you say December or September? December, the end of December, or the 2022? For the, the, the 3,300? The 3,300 came in in 2021 for 2020 claims. So it's basically, we don't get the, our refund until the following year. So when we put it in our budget for this and the funds come back, it'll offset. Right, it's and through easy. September, uh, Don, there's 7,100. Yeah, that's okay. Mm -hmm. This year. Right. So, <clears throat> no one getting sick. That's... Right. So if you decide that you want to stay with us, this is what needs to be sent back to Craig. Oh, why don't we go ahead and make this decision now? I don't think, Ray, did, did you have any reason why you didn't want to? Yeah, no, I, I, I would like to make the motion that we... Uh... Actually, I have a couple of questions. Uh, refresh me again. What's available through the league? The through VLCT. Through VLCT is Vermont Health Connect with Blue Cross Blue Shield, and he looked into that, and it was going to cost the town more money. Okay. And the policy Did you get was anything from the league. I have not received anything okay. from them, and but he went in and looked at it, and he said that. Um, it also wasn't going to benefit the employees. It was not as good of health insurance that we currently have. 
Okay. He said it was going to be a lot more. Yeah. Than I kind of wish you had gotten in touch with me prior to this. I just barely got this. Well, if you want to go ahead and wait, John, we can. Um, yeah. Our next meeting is prior to the due date on this. Mm -hmm. Yeah, you have it right there. Yeah. Um, well, I wouldn't want to jeopardize it going up either. No, the well, well, quote expires on October 27th. Okay. Yeah. yeah. So we have another meeting. Yeah. So, Unfortunately, right. yeah. I'll be away. Well, so. but you can do the, the research that you want to okay. do. That's what you're, okay. I know you're retired, but um, <clears throat> because you've done that, I think we should give you the shot to take a look at it. Okay. Yeah. To make I sure do. due diligence is not going to cost us anything to take a look. Do you want yeah. me to take that back then and hold on to that so it doesn't get lost? This? Yeah. <laughs> no, I just barely received this on, I think it was Friday, John, otherwise I would have okay. called you for a meeting. <clears throat> All right. Is there anything else that we should know about it then, Sherilyn? No. Or that John should know? Not that I can, I'm aware of. All right. So right. let's go ahead and move on to the agenda. Uh, John, so take look at that um and cheryl if you could work with john with vlct yeah. just to get something so yeah i haven't received anything from them yet which is really odd really? from the blue cross yeah. which she'll help normally they send stuff out and haven't yet yeah well could i mean that they sent everybody not only not just people that are already with them mm -hmm. usually usually i get something with all everything and i haven't yet yeah um just don't forget those minutes I will not forget. <coughs> Mind me. Okay. There's a change on the minutes. All right, so let's go ahead. Um, on the agenda, we're <coughs> close to being on time. We have uh, Clark, who's on Zoom, who had a, what'd you say, a doozy of a cold, Clark? That would be correct, sir. All right, well, thank you for not coming in. Um, yeah. Everyone here appreciates that. Uh, so go ahead. You're going to talk about the uh, village wastewater. Yes, I am. Um, not much of an update. The um, Cheryl Lynn was gracious um, to meet with me about a month ago or so and work on the uh, loan application, uh, which is now um, that iteration is in with uh, Tom Brown uh, for him to take a look at and see where we are at. Um, and so far I have received, or the town has received, a, um, a soils map of sorts from Otter Creek indicating certain uh, properties in town that might be worth looking at in terms of um, uh, possible siting, you know, meeting possible test pits and that sort of thing. Um, and so at this point, I'd like to talk with Otter Creek before we take the next step in terms of talking with some of the landowners, property owners, just so I know a little bit more about um, how to explain the process and, and that kind of thing. Um, and <clears throat> it's been uh, a, a little challenging getting in touch with uh, Otter Creek um, the last few weeks. So that's been um, something that, that I need to resolve as well so that we can um, feel like things are moving on. Um, at least I, I understand, or we understand a little bit more about what's um, going on from their end. Uh, let's see. Um, I did um, clarify, and I think I may have sent this to you, Tom, um, the explanation about the zero interest loan. And um, the town um, will not be on any kind, there's no expectation for the town um to repay the loan um in this case the, the feasibility study could be shelved possibly uh and not acted upon and it's the town is under no uh, obligation to um, pay for the feasibility study now i say shelved i don't necessarily mean put away and forgotten uh, but just the information is there for the town to to use at some point and it could be you know proceeding with I had discussion about whether or not to, to take a look at um, bonding and other funds to, to build such a system and build co community support. Or it could be that based on the estimation of the cost and available funds that uh, waiting might be a better option. But at this point, um, 
we're hoping to try to get some test pits dug before the end of probably the early to mid December or so before things really kind of freeze up and become unavailable. Um, and once I get an indication back from the state in terms of how we've done so far in filling out the loan application, there's elements of that that need to be completed by Otter Creek and then we can send it in. Um, and, and then the negotiation at that point begins in terms of um, what the, um, the scale of the feasibility study will be in terms of costs. Um, and in that case, since the state is fronting that money, uh, they're the ones that will be working with Otter Creek. Uh, I mean, well, with the town as well, but mo uh, mostly with Otter Creek to come up with uh, what they plan on, um, you know, how, what, what the feasibility study is gonna cost. So that's where we are at. Um, I'm hoping that by the, probably in a couple of weeks to have some conversations with some landowners and see whether people are in, uh, might be um, interested in having, um, you know, it's, it's a tricky, it, you know, it's not necessarily a sell, but just making sure that I can explain adequately what their response, their options would be if they are willing to have a, um, some test pits dug on their property. Um, it, it, part of the explanation is that the, there is money available to purchase property for such a system. And that purchase would not be funded by the town in this case, it would be state funds that would be available for that. Um, and, but at what rate, whether it's fair market value, appraised value, I'm not sure. That's something that, you know, we would, that's one of some of the questions I need to find out before we proceed. So in a nutshell, that's, that is where the, processes uh, at this current time. Um, well, good. It sounds like you're, you're slowly making prog progress um, and you hope to meet with Otter Creek sometime in the next week to get that um, yeah. Yeah. cleared up, yeah. kind, of con kind of work together. Right. Yeah. Right. Yeah. We need to just make sure that we get a, a regular schedule um, put forth so that we can uh, check in on a routine basis. Ray had a question. Yeah, uh, Clark, uh, uh, after our conversation last week, I did reach out to Otter Creek. Uh, unfortunately, <laughs> I didn't have any more luck than you did. Uh, I, don't, I really uh, I don't know what's going on with Robert, uh, but I did. I had his, I have his personal phone number, and, and I left a message, so I, I'm quite sure he got it. I, I just okay. don't, I don't know. Uh, well, I'll follow up tomorrow um, and be a little bit more insistent that we. Yeah. Uh, yeah, and I'll reach out to him again too. I wasn't uh, sure if he got hold of you or not and did tell me, but uh, I was going to call you, but I did. But uh, okay, so if we both start aiming at him, you know, hopefully. Yeah, we can. Uh, we can get some movement here. Okay. Yeah. Uh, and there are there any other questions at this point? Board have any questions? Um, Kelly? No. I don't think so. So Clark, you're, there's nothing you need from us going forward here? Until no, I just wanted to do an update and um, I guess I probably should do one at the, uh, the first meeting in November as well. So, uh, and I apologize for um, being unavailable on the 19th. That was my my mistake. So I apologize for that. Oh, no, that's all right. Worked out just fine. All right, Clark, well, thank you. I hope you get well. Um, take care of yourself. All right. Thank you very much. So long. Hi, Clark. Bye, Clark. John, you want to grab a seat? Or... Sure. People come in. All right. So we'll move ahead. Uh, we have at 635. And we're a little ahead, but that's good. Uh, we have uh, McKinney Consulting inquiring about a legal trail. And so uh, we've got Gunnar McCain on Zoom. Is there anyone else with him tonight? And you are? Josh Ribeiro. Say again? Josh Ribeiro. Josh Ribeiro. All right, Mr. McCain, go ahead. Sure, so my client who is Josh Ribeiro uh, has a piece of ground off of the Moortown Mountain Road, which is accessed by Legal Trail 11, uh, and then a right of way through private land. 
So in order to get access to his land, he'd like to upgrade about a thousand feet of Legal Trail 11. Uh, we did send in a little map showing where that is in the real world. So folks, you know, would have an idea where that looks like. Uh, I think Legal Trail 11, as it continues through, actually connects into Herring Brook Road, uh, up off of Jones Brook Road. But we're not going nearly that far, like I say, about a thousand feet. So this, the purpose of this inquiry is to ask you folks, um, what do you need for Josh to be able to do that? Um, or is it is it just a matter of asking and he, he can go in and do the improvements? Um, just asking those questions and start that ball rolling. So I guess that's the question for you guys is, is do we need to do more than just submit a couple of forms? Um, what kind of information would you like to see? Well, sure. We do have um, a, a form to fill out. You may have seen the uh, working in the road uh, roadways form. We have that online. We can also get that from Cheryl Lynn. Um, yeah, very easy. Um, Martin, our um, yeah, uh, road foreman, will also have some input on really what needs to be done on the trail. Uh, we've had recent um, circumstance on the other side of town where someone's building out on a, what used to be a legal trail or still is a legal trail. Uh, so Ray has worked with Martin and the landowner to make sure um, that it's gonna be able to provide access uh, and egress for emergency vehicles. That's one of the important things that uh, we're finding uh, that we need to be doing on these. Um, Martin, did you have any? You know, I, I walked that trail with uh, another potential land buyer. Um, it's very deceiving um, where the trail appears to be as a old logging road uh, that they built what looks like somewhat parallel to what would actually be a legal trail. So I think the tricky part of that is knowing exactly what you're upgrading. You're not dumping money into something that is not a legal trail and then come um, find out, you know, through court proceedings that you've just dumped a lot of money into somebody's property that's not town property. That's going to be the tricky part of that one, I think. Have you had any um, surveys done at all, Josh? Um, I don't believe so on that part of the right of way. So I think that would, I was going to bring up the same topic, Martin. I don't know if we know exactly where the right of way is up through there. You know, it's it's been used quite a bit. It's been moved over. Or, you know, it really yeah. needs to be surveyed, I think. In this case, I think by the, the, the person who wants to do the work to make sure that it's in the right of way. Yeah, and then uh, I think that's the trickiest question is yeah. make sure where it is. And then, I mean, we don't have any opposition here, I don't think, to, to doing the work as long as it's done, again, with uh, safety involved, you know, that we know that uh, ambulances and fire equipment can get it out. Um, that's the standard we've been using. We, we've got actually the Planning Commission and uh, some of the DRB members come tonight to talk about these types of things. So probably the quicker the better for you. <laughs> um, uh, All right, so if I, I, I couldn't understand everything that was being said in the background just because of the, the Zoom microphone and whatnot, but we would work with Mr. Martin as the road foreman to make sure we're understanding what the upgrades are after we go in and do a survey to make sure we understand exactly where the road is. Is that what I understand? Uh, yeah, Mr. Cameron and Martin Cameron. Um, oh, Martin Cameron. Yep. Uh, that would be correct. Yeah. Um, does anyone else have any other thoughts on that? No, no that's, that sounds like that's the route we should go. Yeah, I'd be glad to work with Martin as well. You know, in fact, I'd like to, like to be a part of this. All right, because you were on the other road over here, yes. so it's probably a good idea. Yeah. Um, and there, you can go back and you can we'll talk with Martin and, and, and Ray here. I mean, I think there was a couple little pull-offs 
that we uh, provided in case people are traveling back and forth. But we're not looking to make you jump through hoops or do anything crazy, but it, but it needs to be done to a certain degree that uh, the road foreman and, and Ray, who's worked with, uh, who just retired from Du Bois as an engineer, um, you know, if you can work with them and you know where it is, um, you know, we'll, we can push forward. Sounds good. Thank you. Mr. McCain. All right. So if there's any other questions right now, um, shoot them out or we can move forward. I think that's it for now for us. Appreciate your time. Thank you. All right, sir. Josh. And we'll now we'll move on. So now we have the discussion with the DRB, the Planning Commission, um, and road department on uh, issues with class uh, four and legal trails. <coughs> yeah. Craig Oshkello's term on the DRB has expired and he can't actually show interest. He wants to be reappointed and mm -hmm. he's president, so he's in So you're saying he'd like to do that before? Yeah, probably want to do that before he gets involved in the conversation. All right. All right. Um, I'll make a motion to appoint. To reappoint. To reappoint. Second. A second. All right. All in uh, favor of the uh, the motion. Aye. 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 All right. Thank you, Sasha. <laughs> All right, um, John. Why don't you, Greg, John, um, Deborah. Sorry, Deborah. Martin. Why don't you guys move up around the table here? Great, go ahead as well. That's fine. That's that's good. Well, first I want to thank everyone. Uh, Callie, do you mind moving down just a little bit? Um, you know, we don't as as a group get together with with the other boards that often. Uh, so I'm pleased that a couple of you can come. I know we've got Dave Stapleton. Uh, online as well, uh, and Stefan, the, the fire department chief, um, who usually has a lot to say about these type of issues as well, and Martin, but um, in general, I wanted to talk about um, issues that you just saw come before us, and John, we've, I know we've had uh, some discussions with you about as far as uh, our legal trails, Class four roads, um, and now that people are really looking for land and starting to purchase these uh, uh, parcels, you know, do we need to do anything as as a board um, to to you know, make sure we're doing the right thing? I guess. Is that a question? Yeah, it is kind of a question. <laughs> we need some direction, I guess, as a select board. Well. I mean, obviously, the select board, you have authority over class four roads and legal trails, and whether they're going to be reclassified or permitting work to be done within them. And I think it's always good to try to be consistent. It's ad hoc. You know, I mean, there's enough collective memory probably on this board. But, um, you know, I would encourage you to have policy in place. If what you Basically, the feedback you gave Josh and Donna McCain about legal trail 11, um, you know, try to put it on paper. Maybe somebody else, some other town has a policy that uses the template. Adopt. Yeah. John? Danny, comments? Oh, um, well, I mean, you know, we do have the class four road policy. Um, and in fact, but we wanted to review that too. And um, you know, pretty much wanted input, seeing that you're the guys that, you know, get the <clears throat> you know, get the requests and the variants and so on. Um, and we just wanted to make sure that, you know, before um, before we okay anything, that uh, you know it's okay right. with you folks too. And, okay. and historically, it's, it's more of a problem with legal trails. Um, 
because as, as we were just discussing, you know, most of the time we don't know, know where the trail actually goes. Uh, well, because it's changed over the years. And, and in class four, um, you know, oftentimes, you know, people expect us to do what they've done, with what we have done in the past. And it's just with so many people moving on class four roads, you know, we just can't afford to do that. So, you know, we, we need something, I think, in, in place where we can make sure that, um, you know, people know. I mean, that's one of the problems that we've had is that people buy land and so on and think that, you know, they can just move there and people will take care of the road. And that's not the case. Right. So, I think we need, need an overall plan going forward. Because it's like a class 4A and B. Right. So that's even that's more for the road maintenance, I think. Yeah, you know, we're changing the permitting and zoning and um, whatnot. But what my feelings on it are that um, it's definitely become a much more prevalent um, in the last five years, even a lot of uh, development happening on the legal trails. And uh, town trails. Most of the time, it's fairly cut and dry. I mean, if they, you know, when I get a curb cut or something, I'm not uh, looking at myself as enforcement on zoning or ordinances in town. I'm just looking at it from a road standpoint. If they need a culvert, if you know, culvert needs to be provided. Uh, what we have run into a little bit lately is people that have built on class fours will call. In mud season, would say, um, I can't get, you know, use the emergency vehicle caveat, and you know, it's uh, frustrating. They chose to live where they do with less than desirable road conditions, and um, and then want to try to use that. So, something I don't know if we can catch in the, in the zoning or permitting phases of this, you know, to just try to um, you know, these, this legal trail 11 is a very um, going to be a lot of interesting parts with that just because what little research I've done it does look like the legal trail is about 20 feet to 50 feet from a woods road that was put in um, that obviously somebody logged on and that's kind of being used as the de facto legal trail now, but um, whoever that landowner would have every right to block access um, as because it's not, at least according to the maps, it's not where the legal trail is. So it's uh, definitely an issue going uh, forward on all of them, but this one definitely is a tricky one. Is this the only legal trail where there's uncertainty about where the road actually is. I don't think no. it's, no. I'm saying it's, it's, it's more it's common than more not. Common, right? yeah. I mean, even uh, our other roads have history of um, landowners saying, you know, the road used to be over there and it shifted, you know, five, seven feet uh, one way or another over the years. Um, so then those roads are technically surveyed either. So we don't really know. We're just going with the assumption that we're in the right away. But in some cases, it's five to seven feet. In other cases, it's way yeah, exactly off. exactly. When you way come off. to the legal trails in the class fours, commonly what happens is either there was an erosion event where it washed out a part of the road. Somebody just went thirty feet around the thing where a tree came down and they just started driving around and now you're you're 50 feet off of what was the legal trail and that's now kind of accepted as the legal trail but legally it wouldn't be if it was surveyed or that original trail wasn't where the road was to begin with so it's definitely an interesting uh, frustrated frustrating dynamic because of the development that I mean it's the cheaper of the land that's available now, so it's appealing um, 
So it's, I think, going to be more commonplace as we move forward. No, I agree. Um, it, seems, it, it seems to me that we needed to just have something that people would, so that they would realize, or the, the, or the bank realizes when they go to loan the money that you're on a class four road B and it means this, or you're on a trail and it means that. Because I'm not sure, it just doesn't seem people are, are aware of, of where they're buying the land. And then like Martin said, they get a phone, you know, they make a phone call, oh, I can't get into my house, you know, it's all money. Well, that's, and that, I think that's the question, that's why we've asked. Yeah. We're not sure whether to have it on the planning commission side where, all right, you guys come up with ordinance if you're gonna build in, you know, off of legal trail, or do we have it on John's side on the DRB where he puts, all right, you can do it, but these are the restrictions and this is what you need to do. Um, so where, you know, because it ends up, it ends up coming to here because Martin hears about it and you know, all of a sudden someone needs, you know, three loads of stay mats so it's safe to get to their home. You know, and they have a permanent home and they didn't know about it. And, and so and there's plenty of strip residences out there that were built numerous years ago on class four illegal trails. And what we're finding now is those residents have sold to somebody new who's come in and perhaps the previous land landowner wasn't forthcoming with information. I mean, recently this winter, first snowstorm, second snowstorm, the phone rings, when are you going to plow such and such a road? Well, we don't plow that road. Well, we were told that the town was care of it. So that's what it's going to what was, what was frustrating to me, particularly the call the hill issue, was that I think it was, to me, it was clear in our uh, zoning that they had to go to VRB to get the permit, especially, and, and fix the road. And somehow that the owner yeah, no. never, never, never followed the process. And that's particularly frustrating that uh, if they get a permit application, um, they have to know the procedure somehow. And I know our last only the next period was left a lot to be desired, but we, I guess we've got to stop that from happening. That when uh, we get an application, that application, the applicant needs to know right at that point what he needs to do or they need to do. All right, and, and again, back to the cop hill, I don't think that was the fault of anything but the zoning administrator not following through. Yes. Um, but what we're more looking for yeah. is are those things that they need to follow through on or is this something again that we we just wait and we push it off to john's group from the drb and hope that they come up with um you know the permit requirements Deb, right. did you have a, an idea david david Singleton, can you hear me okay Correct me if I'm wrong, but I'm pretty sure that the zoning regulations are silent on legal trails, right? We don't have anything in our in our box of, of what pushes something to the to the DRB for for the review or what stays with the zoning administrator. It's silent, right? Yeah, pretty much. I think there is some mention, but uh, it's very um, ambiguous. I think. Well, there's a section in the ordinance that talks about if any development is proposed, that the access is via something other than a class one, two, or three road or a state highway, the development has to go to the development review board for conditional use. Well, it's not conditional use. Um, but the only criteria we are asked to look at is basically issues of safety, safety, so, traffic, lot configuration, road and site conditions, and then we can impose conditions. Right, that's your point. So usually it's a residence that's proposed, and um, you know usually the condition we impose is that you know we try to make sure that the width of the right of way is sufficient. Um, and, and the ordinance doesn't really tell us, but I think based on my experience, I think we've suggested a minimum of 30 feet so that you have space for a travel way 
and ditching to the extent needed, and to be able to push snow. Um, and two, that the landowner maintain it uh, such that it's the, the house location is accessible by emergency vehicles all seasons of the year. Yeah. Um, so, uh, you, know, you know, I think if there's going to be changes and you want the development review board to look at other things when development is proposed on a class four road or a leaf trail, it really needs to go into the zoning ordinance and it's really the purview of the planning commission. And I think the tension in you know the town plan and the existing ordinances is historically the town plan has said basically development is discouraged on these locations because they have poor access. Typically the reason you know, people are not living there today that lived there a hundred years ago is, um, you know, because it's steeper and uh, more remote and it's what, you know, allows, you know, wildlife habitat to enforce tree habitat. Um, so, you, you know, I mean, there's certainly been proposed changes to Act 250 I don't think they've worked through the legislature to try to discourage building of new roads or improvement of new roads so that people are living in these you know, more uh, remote areas. And um, you know, so that's the you know, tension there. Um, there is a need for housing. There is a need for people with lesser means to be able to afford to buy land and, and build their house. So, um, and that's really the planning commission, I think, that can sort through those policy questions. And yeah. And that's what I'm thinking too, John. I, I, uh, I think, I mean, I, I do think there needs to be a clear policy about, from the perspective of homeowners and potential buyers of, you know, what can be done with the class four road in terms of developing a driveway and who's responsible for what. And that, that needs to be clear because it has a huge implication for the, the value of the property. And, um, but on top of that, I think there's, I think we need to do some consideration on a road by road basis of whether the town really wants to discourage development on a specific class four road, or maybe the opposite, maybe encourage development. And I'll give you, and because I know most about Cobb Hill Road, because I happen to live at the corner of it, of the class four part, uh, as an example, uh, you know, I think there are a lot of residents up here who, who are not happy that, that the road's becoming more developed because they were using it for recreational activities. But, but at the same time, I think there's a case for making it passable to at least a pickup truck, uh, which it's not really now. I mean, it could be, but it's, it's very hazardous, I would say. Um, because it really separates us from the rest of Moortown, right? You know, I have to drive. The reason I'm not at the meeting tonight is because it takes me at least 20 minutes to get there, and I didn't have that amount of time to come down. So, um, so, so I, you know, I think uh, there is interest in the class four roads for various purposes. I think some owners along some of the class four roads might be happy to have them closed off just. Uh, you know, no, no longer be roads at all, be just considered trails and not be developed in the future. But I don't know that. Um, and it seems like we ought to be reviewing them road by road and asking ourselves, do we really want to discourage development on this road or maybe the opposite in some cases? I think that's that's a, um, certainly a good idea. I, I agree. Yeah. And sir, and your name again? Yeah, my name is Colin, and uh, I also live on a class four road and um, happen to make it, you know, down to be in the meeting tonight because I think this is very important to discuss about the development of our town and how opening up the class four roads to better development can lead to tax generation and how that can really improve our town, offer more services, and, you know, bring more people to our community to provide more tax revenue so that we can have improved 
So, uh, Deb, you think it's something that you guys could take on then or, or take a look at? Well, let's talk about it in our next meeting, David. I think that's safe to say. Yeah. I, I think we can, we can certainly discuss it. I think, uh, as you know, with the wastewater situation, we've, well, and I guess with ARPA, we established a committee to to cover something that's not just people on the planning commission. I think we need other people involved, but if you want to follow that model, I think we could potentially do it. Uh, I can take it up at our next meeting, which is two days away. So. No, I think that would be good. I know it's, it's going to be something that's going to take take some time, but we've been wrestling with this for you know a few years as to what to do. And I think we need to, uh, rather than continue to kick it down the road, we will um, get some policy in place uh, so that it's clear. I mean, I think that's what people are looking for uh, as well. You know what they can do and, and how to do it. How to do it. Isn't it also relevant into this um, as to this gentleman is saying that a lot of the trails we don't know where they have to be. We have to figure out where they are. I mean, Whoever is looking into that property has to figure out where the trails are. I mean, most of them, we don't really even know. They're not in. Right, and I think that's important to have in our policy as well, is distinguish that and, and, and how that's How paid that's for. dealt with, yeah, yeah. because it's definitely. I know we have, we've been, uh, last year put money in the budget to start to identify trails. Um, that we're trying to do, although we haven't this year, we've had. Uh, more of a time trying to get surveyors, but we're, uh, well, you know, they just <laughs> plug everything else. Um, and we have money, to, we know we're gonna need to spend some to, to look, because depth to your question earlier, I mean, I would say probably more than half of the trails or even some of the class four, are, you know, yeah, we're pretty sure it's there. You know, we had over the mountain last year where we, we did a survey and, you know, it was, 150 feet different than where it had been so it's you know something that needs to be looked at but i think we got a plan in place um and john i know you're you know um on the other end of it but we can certainly maybe on the, the committee i sound like david was leaning towards some kind of a committee towards it if you guys had someone that you wanted to, to put on that even um just because again it really helps I mean, because you've seen that you have a lot of experience with it as well, and uh, so that we can get it right. Sure. Yeah, no, I, I uh, think it's, um, it would be foolish to probably discourage, you know, the development. Um, what I think is probably going to happen is you'll have an upgraded section of legal trail or class four, and then there'll be another chunk of land for sale slightly beyond it and then there'll be some more development and I agree with Dave. I think most of the feedback that you're going to get back negative is going to be people that have been enjoying these trails themselves to themselves basically for years and now they're having to share them but the, the land was for sale so everybody had the same opportunity to purchase it. I don't yeah. know if we want to discourage it, but it just needs to be a fairly common sense approach to. Yeah, no, I think, in the, you know, if there's taking any direction from this select board on this, it's, that's what we're, we're not trying to make people jump through hoops. We just want to take a look at it. And I think Dave's approach to, you know, even certain trails, do we want to in, encourage here or, or discourage? I, you know, I, I would have to look at that. Uh, because then you start getting into a lot of maybe legal issues that way. Uh, uh, but, uh, you know, something that's, you know, environmentally uh, responsible as well. We, you know, we need to look at that um, as well as what works in our community. All right. So Dave, we appreciate you bringing that up. Um, and Deb, thank you for coming as well. We appreciate it. Um, John, you're uh, always uh, welcome. Thank you. We appreciate your expertise. Very good. Um, Dave, actually, you and Deb, before you, you leave, 
Um, there's a couple things. I know a new business, and I'm sorry I didn't get back to your email, but I will bring up um, uh, what you've asked, and we'll go ahead and, and look at that and try to get that stuff taken care of so it can go on the ballot in March. Um, and the other th thing I'd like to do is, is, I know you guys have an ARPA meeting on Wednesday or the 12th, but sometime in November, get you guys here and just kind of discuss what you guys have come up with that um, and any recommendations or see where we might be going one way or another. Because we've had, well, you were here tonight, we had a few other requests that are, you know, coming in. So you guys should take a look at those uh, as, as well. Well, I think we had, um, there was one that, where was it from? Uh, not the Nick, the ones, but the, the, the Mad River TV, I think, had a small right. one. Yeah. yeah. Um, it wasn't a lot of money, but I think we should you know, take a look at it regardless. Um, and I think that's we yeah, yeah, two hundred fifty dollars. Yeah, and then uh, the neck of the woods. Yeah, yeah. Neck of the woods. That's what I have to. Neck of the woods. The ones we already said. Right, but they should have a look at that and see what we're thinking on that. All right. Thank John. Do you have anything else for us? That you guys are seeing as obstacles or things that you'd like us to look at or work on? I wonder. Is it clear that, I mean, if somebody has a legal trail and they're going to upgrade it and they're going to do survey work so you know where it is, can you, you can reclassify a class three as a four or a four as a three. Once something's a legal trail, can you classify it as a town class four highway? I, I would think so. As I know, yeah. Okay. Right. yeah. I'm just curious. I don't know the answer. Yeah, um, but I don't think that we're looking to do that anywhere. Um, but people, I mean, if they wanted to bring it up to class four standards and then us take over the road, that's a whole. Right, right. I'm not, yeah, I know the town doesn't want to. Okay, that's, take that's, that's I didn't know whether that's where you were going with that. Yeah. So yeah. that would be a transformative change. Yeah. <laughs> I'm, just, I'm just throwing it out there. But, you know, that's something we can take a look at, or we'll ask our attorney, John. And, uh... Well, it, it's such an interesting question, I think, because when you look at the class four roads and the legal trails and where they are and what would happen, um, you, know, you know, I think of Jones Brook and Herring Brook Road and is it Kelly Brook or Ward Brook? Yeah, the whole Kelly Brook. Brook yeah. You know, and there's a connector up high and, and there's a connector up high that goes over to Lynch Hill. Yeah. which is class four, and uh, there's a lot of land there. And, uh, you know, obviously 150 years ago, people lived up there. There's they did. Old, yeah. Mm -hmm. and, yeah. uh, it's close to Montpelier, obviously part of the demand that's driving this is, uh, um, yeah, people looking into the and I think you're gonna continue to see that. So um, if the town wants growth, uh, yeah. But I think you need to go at it, you know, right now it's ad hoc and right. um, really the planning commission is supposed to plan and think about these things. <laughs> there's, there's, there's wetlands and there's oh no, there's a lot too. Unique yeah. habitats as well. So. Yeah, it's not as easy as just saying this is the policy, you know, you know what we want to hear. Of you know, there's a lot, uh, a lot involved. But we need to, again, like you said, it's ad hoc now. Uh, you know, we're telling uh, this gentleman here, you know, you know, we're going to work with you the best we can, but that's, but that's all we have right now. Uh, and, you know, we don't want to, again, putting people through, keep saying it through hoops, but we need to probably have a better policy than what we have now, which is not. All right. Nice to see you, John. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you, Thank you Dave, for uh, zooming in. Deb. Thank you. Uh, what can you hear? Congratulations. 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 Yeah, thank you, Frank, for coming down as well. You're welcome.
And Will, thank you. This is the, this you're still so welcome to stay, so don't oh, have to go. You're not taking these with you. He did put it on there. Okay. And that was the one that we had prior to what we have now. Okay. Okay. Let's see if I should stay for anything else. Oh, you are. All right. Thank you all. Yeah. Well, thanks for the, the uh, yeah, 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 you're right, you're right. Yeah, yeah. yeah, thank you very much. I don't know if the health office is going to let us eat. Ms. Okay. Ms. Martin's gone. All right, thank you. All right, so we'll, um, Sherilyn. yeah, Sherilyn's going to do a couple things, but then we're going to go ahead into the executive session here. We're going to select board here on um, October 3rd. Just came out of executive session and I would uh, make a motion to authorize um, our attorney to file suit to enforce the health order issued on September 19th. Second. John seconds. Any further discussion? Seeing none, uh, all in favor vote aye. Uh, aye. Aye. Quite right. Thank you, everyone. And so let's go to reports, communications, and such. Sasha, we'll start with you again, lady. Um, are you doing, Craig? Um, you need a motion for just the technicality of the pipe contract. Okay. You need a motion on a technicality on the pipe contract. Yeah. What's the technicality? The just to have a motion on it so that we can. It wasn't ever a motion was done on that contract. Oh, we signed it. Okay. Okay, good enough. I'll make a motion if we want. <laughs> no, this contract was signed, so good. Okay. We'll discuss that's all right. Um, I mailed out letters to everybody on the Fletcher Road, um, certified. That way, they we know that we've contacted everyone. Um, and when does that start? October seventeenth. Yeah. All right, seventeenth Monday, the seventeenth. That will be closed for how? During the day, um, up to two weeks. Okay, thank you. Yep. Um, um, the Pony Farm Road has been, the parking situation has been resolved with the Sheriff's Office. And there is a road maintenance permit there for Cogden Road. Hunger Valley construction invoice that needs to be approved so that we can pay it. And the MRGP just to keep compliant for the watershed program. Oh, and also um, the amending of the minutes. Second? The amending of the minutes. Oh, the minutes, yep. Uh, Ray, should you go? Well, I was just going to ask Asha, what, where do we stand on the uh, the junk car home until? Sheriff's Department said that they have one of their deputies working on it and it's supposed to be towed. Okay. It, it's still there, right? It's still there. Okay. Yeah. Well, the tow truck can't get up there. And the town can't move it until it's released by the Sheriff's Department. It's a sheriff for the state. I didn't. Uh, didn't it's either a sheriff or Brad Myers is the one I was talking to. I guess Stephen had already talked to him and given him the VIN number. Yeah, but the, he said something about another trooper in there, Trooper Delia. You're right, I think the trooper. And that's, again, reminding me with our contract with the, the sheriff stuff, more or less for enforcement, those type of things, something like that, more of the state that's state going to be there and deal. I have no other complaints. No other complaints tonight, right? Nope. Kelly? Uh, Sean and I talked with Dara at More Best. Well, more so Sean than me, but about bringing back some of the local road round tables that they were doing going to different offices because I guess in her running for office, she's found out a lot of people want to do more work on roads, and that was something that used to happen. So. Was a suggestion to bring it back. 
Yeah. What is it? The road, the road around there was, that was through uh, Ridge to River. We were sponsoring those. We hadn't had one in a while. And actually, um, we had just discussed at the last Ridge to River meeting uh, having one and more town hosting. But, That's what Thera was talking okay. about. But Cor Corey Miller has left uh, Friends of the Mad River. So I don't, I don't know. But doesn't mean we can't still do them. So. Yeah, because I think it was more like what local people wanted for the roads, what different towns were doing, you know, what people wanted to see for roads, oh, okay. because that was, I guess, a big thing where people wanted funding to go or more work to be done. Okay, because the round tables so. we had was just well, it was Ray and myself, and then. Um, uh, different the the valley, road the valley. road crew from the all the valley towns. Yeah. And, and for the purpose of like <clears throat> making it more user friendly or less car, less vehicle thing for people to run yeah, on and just bike on. Maintenance. Oh, yeah, just find out what everybody else is doing and yeah. You know, like somebody had, may have a better idea to do something. Oh, mm -hmm. okay. And then share yeah. that idea, you know? Yeah. Urban equipment that they use for specific yeah. things, or like Duxbury built their own roller for the greater. Maybe we could get an idea from them on all right, how much did that cost you to do? And yeah, does it work? Yeah, all right, good. And also, um, because you were part of it over there, the fire department had a successful um, uh, more fest, yeah. I think well they made taking out overhead was what five hundred dollars something somewhere around. Yeah, it was it was it was right around five hundred dollars, give or take a, a few cents here or there. <laughs> yeah. Good. So step on and um, we had a little bit, but thank you very much for all your work that you did on that. I know you you know uh, you're involved with the committee and then <coughs> just doing all the fire stuff. Um, great stuff. I mean, obviously it was there to make you know a little bit of change, but. I think just seeing all the people, <coughs> meeting all the people, um, was a good thing. Yeah, absolutely. It's a it's a great event, and it's definitely a good opportunity to uh, get to know new people in town. I met I met a few different new families that I hadn't met before, and was able to introduce myself. And they're like, "Oh, we've called you for a fire permit and and things like that." They can finally put a face to the name, and it was a great event. Yeah. Okay. So, anything else, Kelly? Mm -hmm. Okay, I don't think so. Don, what you got? Well, I always am confused whether I do communications or wait till old business. Well, I know you had something old business as far as the, the um, down hall. Down hall, so that would be old business. <coughs> um, I mean, um, Ray and I talked to Chris Hunt to uh, for the at the ready. We're trying to you know just we're working on that. And from John and I met with the same gentleman from D Trans, Chris Hunt, to review the crosswalk. You know, um, so we're got some steps to take from going forward with that. Fill out the permit. He's looking into the where the location is. I mean, they've they've actually redrawn it from the first meeting that we had with uh, John Kaplan from the trans as well. <coughs> so that's a work in progress. And then also I walked over that with Chris on to the radar sign that we're trying to relocate. And um, uh, I actually just sent him an email today just to have him give us some suggestions. And it's a little bit more than, than just picking it up and moving it, you know? just because of the equipment that's on the post. So I asked Chris, like, are there, the state must have people they use to, to move these, you know, rather than us, right. you know, so as they say, nothing comes easy, you know. <laughs> uh, I hope we can still move it before the snow flies, but we'll just keep picking away at it, so to speak. No, and those things, what? you got to grind, is what I call it. Yeah, I mean, but there's so much equipment on the pole, it's, it's you know, there's a little bit more to it than uh, just unbolting it and moving it down the street, the new foundation, or pulling that one out, or 
Anyways, I'm learning all about those soon. Maybe I'll be an installer be next someday. Year. Yeah. <coughs> so those are um, those are some people care some things. John, what do you saw? I got a call from Travis Blodgett, and uh, I believe we have the permit to work in the town right of way on um, Legal Trail 21. Is that right, Sasha? Well, Mar Martin had, I guess Martin had signed off on it, but I don't know that we have. But anyway, it was, um, he was concerned because he saw a lot of trucks going up there, and as far as he knew, there was no, um, no permit issue. Um, and I believe Gillespie's doing the work. Yeah, this is it right here. Okay. Yeah. Okay, so that's... His only concern was the permit? Yeah, right, because there was no, yeah. Okay. So we went up this morning and uh, looked at the work they did. Yeah. And they did a phenomenal job. It looks like they did everything to to standards and they seated it down and everything. So it looks like a very well done job. Oh, that's tremendous, good. Okay. Thank you, sir. <clears throat> um, and then also um, uh, Don and I took a walk on the um, Town Forest Trail and um, uh, with, the, with uh, uh, Michael Brown uh, in terms of uh, seeing what would you know, whether we could, in fact, do some um, logging there. And uh, it seems like there are, there are three, three different tracks that, um, that might be feasible for that. Not really to make the town any money, but really for wildlife management purposes. And uh, probably, he said we'd probably end up breaking even. But uh, so we're just moving. Slowly on that. The forestry manager's plan update. This is a big part of it. You know, in, in two weeks we're going to go with uh, another walkabout to look at the echo class sites and how those ties into the trails and the <coughs> old land use policy and where they are and safety and access to them. Good. Can I uh, can I ask a question on that subject? So uh, Mandy has been persistent from the school about trees in the classrooms that are dangerous or have fallen down already. And she's been reaching out to me as well as Martin, constantly trying to get us to, to do more with the trees. Not that we're against doing some, you know, some tree work, but it doesn't really, some of those trees are dangerous and also it seems a little bit out of the scope and we're certainly happy to do them you know if they need to be done but it should definitely be something that is run by you folks i would believe well is was this the, is this recently that she's done this uh within the last week she sent me another one she'd like some trees removed in the echo classes and then just before school was starting a large tree had fallen onto one of the echo classes and and left some carnage okay because um, we, we definitely discussed this. As yeah, because yeah, and and I had um, the the initial tree that you guys took down, right? No, the the one that was like fallen on the classroom there. Yeah. Was it fell on its own? No, I know, but we just did what we could to cut it up. But I, I'm talking a couple of months ago. Uh, this, I think the last one. Boy, the last one I remember was just before school was starting. What's that? The last one I remember was just before school was starting. Yeah, okay. And it, and it had fallen already on the classroom. We just tried to clean it up to make as much room as we could, but it was a good solid two foot around or bigger. Okay. Um, but she, she has reached out since then. Um, to ask for more. And I think I, I'm fairly certain it was last week. I'm kind of looking through my 
my email. Yes, uh, it was on the 29th, so Thursday of last week. Okay. Uh, she didn't she said, say any chance you have time to meet? There's a couple of my teachers that want to meet about a couple trees up in the outdoor classroom. So I, I just, like I said, I'm not against it. You know, I, I try to do my part because, you know, the safety of the kids is important, but I don't know where that all falls on, you know, as far as, is it something that you guys want us to continue doing, or maybe they just move their classroom or, or figure out from, from that, what we can do to make it work. Or the school carry some of that, something in the yeah. budget for, for, you know, cutting some trees. Well, we are walking with Mandy and some other teachers uh, in, on the 12th. I don't know if it's, you know, okay. at four o'clock. I'll clear some things up. Yeah, and so we'll definitely make sure we bring it up. And please feel free to join us if you want to take a walk. Because one of the other items we were going to approach you with is also what kind of access there is to the to a Echo class as far as with an ATV or something. You know, you had to get up there. You know. So, yep. is that is that work considered part of our uh, part of our understanding with the town? Or the, or the MOU. The MOU. The MOU. It probably is not in there, but yeah. that's something that we can put in there. Yeah. So, okay. Stefan, that's, that's a good idea. Uh, think about you know how much time you're putting into this, so that we can. Kind of put a number on that and put it in our MOU. Um, yep. Uh, when I've done it in the past, I do put the the code down for for at the school, which leads Sasha to to put it in for for the MOU stuff. If I'm correct. All right. Good. And then, but in the meantime, work with John because he's our forest mm -hmm. tree warden um, on any tree stuff. But just keep track of it, and we can make it equitable. Um, you know, agreement with them, so it's safe, um, yeah. and you know, it's not costing us a ton to do it. Yeah, I mean, I think if they're in a, if they're in a situation where you don't feel it's safe to cut the tree, then we shouldn't do it, and they should hire somebody That's to do exactly. it. Right. We shouldn't be asking that. Roco shouldn't be expected to take that risk. Right. 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 Right, but you know, if they're, you know, just a if it's a small tree, tree yeah, things you can right. handle and do. Otherwise, um, you can go out to the tree person. Okay. And yeah, I'll stay in touch with uh, with John moving forward. And I think on the twelfth, we should hopefully be able to get some some clarity on what what they have going on as well. Good. All right. Uh, anything else, John? Uh, no, unfortunately, Stefan, I can't be there on the 12th, but it will be helpful if you're there. That'll be good. I'll be there. Don will yes. be there. Come, okay. come along for the walk. Big D will be there. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> All right, John, nothing else to move on? I just had some uh, questions on from uh, to, for Sasha on some other items that were reports and communication. Uh, what 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 happened then with the that uh, dep uh, the sheriff with Pony Farm Road? Yeah. Um, the deputy stopped here and got the details on what exactly was going on, and he stopped. He left here, went right there, and talked to them about where they're parking. Okay. He told them or asked them to park on the driveway side of their mailbox and stay out of Pony Farm Road. Okay. All right, so we don't need a letter for that, I guess. No. Okay. And how about uh, Green Mountain Power? I got a hold of them through the Green Mountain Power portal, and somebody called me yeah, and said I that, that yeah. he was going to follow up on what was going on. It was somebody above Jared. Okay, good. Okay, that's, that's what I thought. Uh, okay. 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 Thank you, Gus. Um, I guess first again, communications or not, uh, I, again, a great more fest, the whole committee, everyone, I think it really went off well. Thank you for everyone's participation. Um, yeah. the, the cake contest was 
was great. I think most of the select board members that have decided to take that duty off our <laughs> we'll pass it on to the road crew. Yeah. <laughs> oh, John says now he definitely is going to demand that forever. Well, the only only problem is that I ended up holding everybody up. I thought you had to eat the whole piece of cake. <laughs> oh. <laughs> I've been doing it enough time that I know you don't eat the whole thing. It's actually 15 pieces of pit. <laughs> like 15 pieces of cake. Like, oh, oh, God. Uh, <laughs> oh, that's a good one. It was cute to see your uh, grandson there, too. What's that? Your grandson oh, was yeah, cute. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah, he's cute. But, so it was nice to see all the families, all the things. So, um, again, the fire department, uh, great job. Herrick, the pigs were good. Um, I was able to buy some jams and jellies from uh, uh, Mrs. Reagan. Um, it would yeah. be good to space it out a little bit more. I always remember it being a little, a little longer. Oh, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. And it may be good just because I know, like, it was really hard to keep up with French fries. Yeah, I mean, it was. It was. Too, it had been too long in the past. So I think it's too short this year. Yeah, yeah, it probably could have been another hour or so. Yeah, yeah. yeah at least another yeah. hour. So. That's what I was thinking. Especially we got it. would be nice to have uh, like big blue there to the truck. Oh yeah. yeah. People <laughs> touch the truck type thing. Yeah, well I think um certainly if you know all suggestions the the group will take and they're always trying to figure out how to how to do it uh, better and more. Yeah. So and it all depends because you know you could extend it next year and the weather's going to be crappy and no one's yeah, going to yeah. be there. Right, yeah. <laughs> uh, yeah, you're always, but I think there's always a few things they could work on. Uh, but they'll keep it fresh and going. Um, I think that was, God, is there anything else? I guess not. Um, I do have, as far as our meeting minutes, I'd like to approve the minutes of uh, 919. Can we second that? Is there any further discussion on those? All in favor vote aye. 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 And I do want to amend um, so the meeting minutes for June, um, like, pardon me, July 25th. Uh, and when we were setting the tax rate. Um, I made a motion and I did not use the word ARPA funds and I need to put that in. So I uh, am moving to accept the calculations as uh, presented using $35,415.16 of ARPA funds due to lost revenue in 2021. Second. Thank you. All in favor? Would I? Aye. 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 All right. So that's done so that we can use those ARPA funds for that. Um, so let's go ahead. We have some old business. Don, why don't you go ahead and start? You have a few things that you want to chat. So. Well, um, just quickly on the town garage. Um, so, Hunger Valley Construction, as this gentleman, Al Alex uh, Tol Tolsky, I'm not doing a very good job pronouncing his name, but <laughs> he's, he's not been here. great. He's done some work at the uh, Town Hall, which is what Sasha was referencing, we need to approve some of what Sherilyn has covered in the grant. Um, but he's also taken on um, looking into solving the condensation problem at the town garage. And so like, he called me the other day. Um, he's found a, a contractor, you know, an HVAC contractor, who actually um, has suggested what apparently was in um, from talking to Martin was in the original design, which is to have two fans, you know, fairly large fans up in the ceiling that would keep the, you know, the air, you know, because it's a radiant slab that goes up. And, um, you know, to, to do that install, so it would require some electrical and, and then this, these fans installed, and it's somewhere in the $40,000 range to do, I mean, he's, you know, he'll get a written quote, the whole thing, all the details, but I just wanted to 
bring it to the board's attention for us to think about and as we get into budget time thinking about how we'll, how we might fund something like that because it's certainly something that needs to get taken care of or we research if that's if you know maybe this we can check with someone else if that's the solution but anyways at least it's it's just Start some progress you know because we haven't really so this has been now kind of two years that we've been trying to get this thing rolling so that's the update on that i don't know what folks think of that i'll ask them to do a no, I have to see what he has, but yeah, I think he does. Do you so remember with their fans? Went back there there was a talk on? about it, and I, you know, it's been so long, but I yeah. don't know why they were eliminated to tell you the truth, but I, I remember that coming up yeah. at one time or another. No, I don't know why. It seems like that could be a So would a Efficiency Vermont be able to tell us? Uh, oh. Would Efficiency Vermont be able to Oh, we should maybe double back with those guys. Yeah, that's a good idea. Uh, yeah. Would be a viable solution. That sounds... Yeah, so maybe I'll get the, the quote, you know, the proposal from them, and then with something else, then I can run it by Pretty efficiency size, yeah. Vermont by saying uh, it's two fans that are 25 foot, you know, whatever the size is. Or something. They might have some feedback on Not good. Good to see some progress then, though. Yep. Okay, so I mean, we haven't gotten anywhere with the tree in the back yet, but we're working <laughs> on that. Anybody here be able to climb the tree and take some branches off? Not in this group, I didn't think so. Um, so town hall, uh, the town hall, just a, a update is that um, Corey and I met with Cheryl Lynn and you know went over the transition to the management of the town hall. So we're pretty well set with that, and, and talked about the management plan, which is um, the only thing really that's could be open for discussion as we go along is the cleaning, you know. Um, I think in the current plan we're saying one day or, and then there was some discussion, should we give it three days and should we be charging the rental person the cleaning fee kind of thing, the cleaning before and cleaning after. So that seemed to be the only thing that we're really trying to figure trying out. To right? figure out. Um, as, as it stands now, I believe Megan comes in after a, 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 an event and cleans and, um, and, you know, reports if anything has been damaged or right. um, anything like that. How much does that run, do you know? For, for she usually does between an hour and four hours. It depends on what's going on. I mean, in the plan, I think it's listed as 70, like a $75 cleaning charge type of thing. Yeah. To the rental plan. Yeah, I saw that. I didn't have a chance to read that yeah. email that you sent today. So, anyways, you know, other than that, it's we're we're ready to roll with you know, with our six month um, management of the town hall. So that was an update there. And in terms of, we're still um, in the weeds, so to speak. You know, working on with the architect and design stuff and. Um, Coming up with a, you know, I mentioned to you that I thought we'd be able to do it at the ten seventeen meeting, have a presentation, right. but I don't think we're quite ready. Right. So maybe November first. Yeah. I need the rest of this month to hammer out some more details. <laughs> so that's that's the update on that one. That's all I got. So that's. Um, anyone else have anything first? Uh, old business we have we're going to hear from the Erica funds so Sasha maybe the yeah probably no November the first meeting of November yeah it'd be good to hear from them on that um legal trails I was wondering on on that the legal trails um Sasha if you followed up on anything on the uh on legal trail 17 Yes, um, I contacted the Vermont survey and he called me back and he's going to go out and make sure that it, it is definitely marked and he's going to make sure that it's plain and simple where okay. it is. All right, and, and Ray and I had talked last meeting, were we going to cut trees or it was Blodgett? 
I think he had a, we can check with him. There was a, an agreement that we had, it had to be done within a certain amount right. of time. Or else we do it. Or, or else, else we, we can do it. And I don't know if the Lipson did over there, over the day, they must have cut some trees, right? If they fixed the road, or is that what they did? Or that was 21. That was 21. Oh, oh okay. <clears throat> right, so 17 is the, the, uh, the new trail. Oh, the one that we moved. Okay. Is that, and, and, I mean, I, I, I certainly don't remember saying that or the guy Martin could bring material in. I mean, that was, that's what he was claiming. But Guy Martin said he could bring it. No, we never said no, Guy no, Martin could bring it. Yeah, 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 that's this. <clears throat> we, uh, if someone wants to come to the board, just like any of the legal trails or whatever, and they want a road permit to upgrade something, yeah. we can look at anything. Yeah, yeah. But, yeah, um, you know, we very, you know, I think, and I remember it plain as day. Um, Ray saying, you know, what well, we need to cut that thing from whatever um, was it the uh, right, whole right away. The whole right away. Um Is that way to be identified. Oh right. Um, and it's all I mean, walking up there there's really there's actually not a ton of wood that was on there. No. It was it was all junk. Um but well, it had to be identified. Right. It yeah. should should be identified while it's all fresh, you know? Yeah. Right. And it was would we have, how wide was it? Do you remember? I mean, we can go back and look, or is it just one rod or that two rods? I think it was two rods. I don't think it was even that. I think it was. We'll have to look back in the agreement, but it's there. And it's, I think it's standard. Right in one rod. I thought it was two of them. Two rods would be 30 feet, right? Yeah. Yeah, yeah I think it was almost, it, it might have been, because it wasn't any less, because I remember we didn't want to have. An yeah. issue where it was one rod, so it's about 15 and a half feet or whatever yeah. it happened to be. Um, yeah, I think it's two rods. Check on that too, because he did say something about one or two rods, but I couldn't yeah. remember for sure. You know what? I probably got okay. it myself, actually. Um, it's one fly like Cobb's hat in the game. <laughs> the copies of the just. Uh, yeah. Want me to flip another light on, Tom? Yeah, if you could for this thing, I can. Thank you, Tom. Yeah. <laughs> On this particular, it says go to the it would take me a minute to find it, but we have what it is. Um, but we will, um, have to make sure that's done. What will we do? Have the road crew do that, or how? That's what we were thinking. You know, if they can do it, that'd be obviously the cheapest way to do it. Yeah, because you know, I have something to do in the winter here after it's frozen. Sure. Um, you know, that's the best time to do that. Yeah. And you can just go and <clears throat> pile it up or burn it or whatever. Yeah. Just chip it and hurt whatever. But I think that's a good idea. Um, also with legal trails, Sasha, have you, I know we were having an issue with, uh, surveying. Is there any, we don't have enough money. Yeah, that that mm -hmm. How much, uh, he said it could be upwards of 30 grand. For one trail? Yes. Yeah. Yeah, that's what, yeah. So unless somebody's really pushing it, I don't know. Yeah, no, we could. Yeah. I don't know if we really need, I don't know how much do we really. I want to pursue this, you know. Yeah, I think actually it's one of those things where we may 
want to um, start a fund, like the Bridge and Culver yeah, Fund. That's a good idea. I think that's a great idea. Yeah. And have take this. We'll start it before the end of this year, so we can take the money that we put in mm -hmm. for this budget, feed it with that, and then ask the town on an article each year to fund whether we five or six, seven, eight, whatever thousand yeah. dollars. Yeah. Um, so we have that money there. Uh, so when we get pushed where we need to do a survey, or once we get substantial money where we can start doing the surveys. Yes. Um, but it's going to take a little time. And, yeah. Wouldn't, um, this, wouldn't this also be something that uh, might get looked at with the planning board and the, or the, this multi, I think you suggested the day that maybe there's a couple other people from just the planning board. Yeah. And maybe in that process also addressing the whole thing about surveying of the trails and stuff. No, I think that will have to be in Especially there. if people are, you know. And who's, gonna, who's in the responsibility yeah. for it. Yeah. yeah. Um, because I think that that's going to have to fall into a home more. Um, yeah, yeah. Yeah, I mean, it seems like that's the route we're going. With this this one yeah. 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 Which was good, and I'm glad and there was no pushback on it. Well, um, so they don't know how much it costs. They don't know how much it costs yet. But, uh, but no, I think that's the way to go because we can't afford, you know, one person, much less three or four people say, well, I want to build out here. Yeah. Um, well, yeah. We got a lot of trails. Right, we got a lot of trails, and then we start saying, well, go ahead, and, and then the other landowner sues, and we're just way in the weeds. Unfortunately, it's a cost that someone's got to bear, and it can't be us. I just, I think in a, in a past meeting, did, did I hear one of someone on the board say, like some of the other towns, they, like Waitsfield and more, they don't do anything with their trails, right? I mean, if someone- yeah, Very possible. That's what they say, yeah. I, I don't know, I was just wondering if they, you know, they have, if that's it, that's the trail or whatever, we have nothing to do with it. I don't know if that's true or not. Well, it was going to be Sometimes they throw it across four roads, too. Yeah, which I I think we want to keep all the real estate we can. Oh, no. I, 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 I don't think you're not suggesting that, but um, yeah, they may not. But again, here, I think, again, in Moortown, we have all, all this land. I mean, we're out of this way, we're Moortown. Um, and there needs to be some. Yeah. middle ground where it can be developed and yeah. where it's preserved as well so hopefully this group that we put that task to can do that um but also keep the town off the hook for paying everyone's everyone's yeah. fee and i know it can be expensive but you know it can be prorated when someone else moves in down the road you know you charge you know they have to mm -hmm. buck up for what was done before them yeah. or something I don't, I don't know it's too much for us to do but um, so we got the condensation, we got the stormwater project that Clark spoke with us tonight. Nothing on the gravel pits, uh, funds for a river road paving project. Um, still, your, uh, you know, you cooked a hell of a cake the other day, Sasha. <laughs> we should have a, a bake sale like, weekly to find some funds. Um, <laughs> tanker truck. Fire department. I did run by Stefan to see if they had any alternative fuel vehicles. There was some. I don't know if you guys saw last week or a couple weeks ago. There was some funding went through, um, and so he was going to look into that. It's, it's uh, electric ones would be. I think you know those are million dollar trucks. But he said there was some options where or he thought that. The truck would shut down. Different things. So he's going to look into that. So there may be some some funds there. Um, so and is that? Did everyone get their ballots in the mail? Yes. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So what did I have an open line now? Is is that on that? I haven't looked at it. I haven't looked at it. I haven't looked at it yet. No, it's only about come on. I thought. We just got it, what, Saturday or Sunday? Was it? Mine came Sunday. Yeah, 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 Sunday, yeah. 
We say so I can't get mail like during the regular week. Can you get it on Sundays? No, we don't. We, yeah. we sometimes we don't get it during the week, and then it came on a Sunday. Yeah, okay, we didn't get any Friday yeah, or Saturday. And then the, it came the postmaster, Sunday. if he doesn't get it during the week, I mean, he he can. Well, well, sometimes he can't. Complain, I'm just saying. No, I, I know, I know. <laughs> yeah, no, no, that's when it happened to come. Just, we got it mail on Sunday. Yeah. Wow. You know, oftentimes he shows up at seven o'clock at night. Um, mm -hmm. What? We're awesome. We have Zena. Zena's great. Zena, well. Yeah. yeah. We don't yeah, have Zena. Great. Yeah. 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 I think Zena's here retirement though. Uh, Unfortunately. No. 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 no we don't. Good. Fortunately, we don't have a regular. No. All right. So we got that coming up. Budget stuff we got to get working on. I know you sent some. Warnings out to people or letting people know what we're looking for. Martin and Stephanie got back to me and they're still working on theirs. I totally knew that that was going to happen, but yep. most others have gotten back to me and start putting them on the list. All right, so if we can do that, so each meeting going forward, we can put some time aside to do the budget stuff and take a look at that. Um, that would be good. That's it. Um, Aside for new business stuff, anyone else have anything new, exciting they want to share with us? I'd like a nice ladder truck next. Cool. Right, let me put this on mute. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I thought you were going to say you wanted one of these uh, pastries. One of these pastries. We can leave you one here and you can come get in the morning stuff on if you want. Oh my yeah, god, that's very good. Very good. Yep. Yeah. No, that. Well, I'll have to sneak in first thing in the morning. You should. Yep. Yeah. All right. Well, if there's nothing else, thank you, Orca, for coming tonight. Um, everyone, thank you for your time. For thank you. Um, and we will see each other in uh, a few weeks. Two weeks. Oh, sorry, two weeks. So uh, we have a few things to sign. Ray already signed these. Signature's getting better, isn't it? <laughs> well, it, look, it looks less like Tom's in here. <laughs> Jesus Christ, <laughs> right? Wow. I think that was a big time, I'm not sure. Yeah, I think it was. <laughs> Shot right across the bow. <laughs> middle and last name on my notary stamp, which means now when I notarize everything, you I have to sign my whole oh, name. Boy. Yeah, it's a lot of fun. So how was your, uh, your gig going over there in Berlin? I love it. No, oh, terrific. Nice. It's, it's great. We finally all got moved around. We're all in our own offices. So what do you love about it? I mean, it sounds like having your own office. Well, I had my own office before too. All right. But um, I don't know. It's just different. You guys work very hard. I'm busy from when I walk in the door at seven thirty until I walk out the door at four. Well, maybe that's it. Cause you're nice and busy and keeping you. If it's not utilities, taxes, doing research, posting invoices, scanning stuff in the vault. <laughs> You think, um, kind of what is your biggest thing that you do over there? Um, well, right now it's going to be sewer and water. Sewer. Yeah, because the root works just came back, so we have to do all our sewer and water bills. Sewer and water bills have to go out, delinquent tax bills have to go out in another mm, Anyone want 15 to look at these? days. So. Hmm. Maybe get over here someday and give Sasha a few tips on, you know, you know how to do some stuff. <laughs> I still walk down the hall and I'm like, Diane, I think I missed this. <laughs> uh, 
So you're assistant treasurer or assistant clerk? Assistant treasurer. Very good. Anything else, folks? All right, so I move to adjourn. Second. All in favor, vote aye. Aye. Well, thank you, everyone.